Today, we talk to home security experts, the LA Clippers, who promise to keep your home secure 50% of the time. And we speak to fitness expert Kevin McHale about summer's big new exercise, fouling DeAndre Jordan. It's time to wake up, NBA! Welcome back to Wake Up NBA, brought to you by the Microsoft Surface. I'm joined by Ryan Nanny, and you can tell by the smile on his face that's slowly forming. The playoffs are over. Are. And now it's time to reflect. The Warriors are your and my and everybody's world champions, mm -hmm. sort of wire to wire, both in the playoffs, having a great run, adjusting really nicely against both Memphis and Cleveland, a terrific regular season, the clear cut, the most deserving team. The cream of the crop. The cream of the crop. Um, it's a new NBA! Um, I don't know what that was. Uh, what that I was loved it. Was. But to you, what is the big story, perhaps besides the Warriors? Okay, so I know you're going to want to I'm going to talk some more State. Warriors, but yeah. Let's not lose sight of the fact that LeBron James just made his fifth consecutive finals. Yes. His sixth overall, which if you look at the, like, the big names that have done that post-Michael Jordan, mm -hmm. it's Kobe, it's Shaq, and it's Tim Duncan. And They're pretty good. It. Um, so, and everybody wants to get tied up in, you know, his record in the finals, and mm -hmm. certainly he's not Michael Jordan in that regard. But consider that most of this playoffs, he didn't have, he either didn't have or was playing with very injured Hobbled, yeah. best second and third player on the yep. team, was taking a shell of a roster to this finals and not having a lot of trouble getting there, mind you. Right. And then once he was there, did everything possible he could to take this series to six games. After Golden State won game one, mm -hmm. and we saw Kyrie Irving go out with that horrific injury, yes. it would have been easy to say the series is going five tops, but he Fair. really he really pushed the Warriors, and I think it's a yes. testament to his amazing talent that we d totally don't deserve because we don't appreciate it. We can't have nice things. And he, I guess, he wrung the rag of talent mm -hmm. out of Mozgov, Tristan yes. Thompson. We were talking about Matthew Della Vadova S yeah. in terms of swinging a series. Multiple Knicks. Multiple Knicks. Multiple Knicks he was saddled So that was, that's just an incredible performance. To speak more to the Warriors at this point, yeah. and this is something we talked about early on in the playoffs, that the Warriors are as Draymond Green goes. Mm -hmm. And we knew we were going to get grading shooting nights from Steph, from Klay Thompson. We got, you know, nice nights from a couple bench guys. Harrison Barnes showed up in a couple big games. But Draymond Green, when he got his sort of cockiness back midway through the series, I would say, finishing game six, I believe, with a triple-double, mm -hmm. the Warriors looked like complete invincibility right. mode activated. It right. was just, it was insane to watch. It was great. Draymond was fantastic. And the fact that a first-year head coach yep. Um, sort of undervalued draft guys and Clay Thompson, who I think fell to 11th or 12th, Steph after Johnny Flynn, Draymond <laughs> in the second round, really smart free agency moves, yeah. getting lucky. This is a team that tried to sign Dwight Howard they did. three or four years ago, yeah. or they did, and then the, the, the offer sheet was, or he decided elsewhere. But the fact that all of these things came together and the Warriors just perfectly complemented everything was a complete joy to watch. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And they're young enough where it's not the end. It's no, going to no. keep on happening. Sorry, everyone else. Sorry. Uh, what to you is a smaller story that perhaps got lost in the shuffle of a fun final? So the season didn't necessarily end in a thrilling fashion for them, but the Atlanta yeah. Hawks won two playoff series right. this year. And, you know, they had a wonderful regular season. They put up gaudy numbers. They had that long winning streak in the middle right. of the season. And we still, I think, entered the playoffs saying, it's the Hawks, and the Hawks in the playoffs are a known entity, and that known entity is bad. But yes. they proved us wrong. They looked very strong in their first two series wins. And that's something Atlanta hasn't done, won right. two playoff series in the playoffs, in the whole time that you and I have been alive. Correct. So, I mean, it, it's very heartening to say that Atlanta is building around the right players, mm -hmm. finding, the, finding the pieces that fit. Down the stretch, some of those players didn't necessarily play as well as you wanted. Kyle right. Korver fell off a little bit. Paul Millsap had some disappointing And they have some off-season responsibilities yes. with Millsap and Mark Carroll. They but do. Yeah. But uh, it, was, it was really fun to watch an Atlanta team uh, show that it was a force to be reckoned with and was not just going to be a boring early playoff exit. Well, and it's also the pitfall that you want to avoid in the NBA. You don't want to just be a first round or even right, second round right. NBA You don't team. want to kill yourself to right. win 55 games or so right. and then be totally dead in the So the fact show. that they know they can win multiple series is yep. they can keep adding parts, they can trust their system. And also Kyle Korver going ice cold yeah. 
if he doesn't go ice cold, it could be a different series. Right. There are things to be enthusiastic and optimistic about with Atlanta. My my sort of smaller story should be one of the more interesting off seasons as well. The Clippers coming mm. back and beating San Antonio oh, in dramatic, fun fashion, which we thought had sort of purged them of yes, their Clippersness, it did. especially Chris Paul. And then to go oh. up three one and lose to Houston, brutal. Is just yeah, it is brutal. They have a fun off season, at least from our perspectives. Yeah, they bring in Lance if you Stevenson. Like terrible uniforms. They have terrible uniform. <laughs> Doc Rivers GM is yeah. always suspect, but they could be getting Paul Pierce. Um, and to see what they do with a sort of revamped roster, adjusted roster, because we know Doc as a, a playoff coach is every, oh, it's just right. about everything you want. Right. Um, but the Clippers just having an eventful playoff and, to me. And looked and looked the part of very scary team that when they're playing their best, oh my God, you yes. want no piece of. It right. would have been. It's a shame it didn't happen. It would have been really interesting to see what had happened if the Clippers had faced off in the Warriors. Right, which is a very difficult matchup for the Warriors with their size and athleticism, and they obviously need to bring back DeAndre Jordan. Uh, To you, now, what is the big question looking forward? So we've had a number of coaching changes so far in the offseason. Three of them stick out because they're either playoff teams or teams that just barely missed out on the playoffs. Um, You've got New Orleans has Alvin Gentry coming in, Fred Hoiberg going to Chicago, Mm -hmm. and of course Billy D, go Gators, uh, (laughs) going to Oklahoma City. And I think it's just going to be interesting because you've got two college coaches and one kind of retread but coming off a championship season as Mm -hmm. an assistant. It'll be really interesting to see what these three teams who have intriguing rosters have shown in the past that they can be very dangerous in the playoffs with Mm -hmm. the exception of New Orleans but they're sort of ascending uh, and maybe have the most exciting player in basketball right now it'll be really interesting to see which of these teams the coaching is the thing that takes them up that next notch and maybe which of these teams the coaching decision was the wrong one that sort of sends them scattering fair. off into a bad, bad left Definitely turn. fair. And to look at Steve Kerr and what he did in his first year, yeah. impossible to say, well, Steve Kerr did it. Right. But the fact that you can immediately impact a team that already has huge pieces, yep. which I would all three of these teams yes, do, yes. and to say, these are the assistants we're going to hire to run this kind of system and to, to sort of go into the summer and into free agency and into training camp with the idea of this is the kind of team we want to be. Those are where the smart coaches make an impact immediately. Uh, My big question at this point is with guys returning in the East and with free agent shuffling, Mm -hmm. with drafts, what does the power, does? is there a shift at all back east right. from the west? Not right. that the west is going to be down at all, really. We, we expect a lot. I mean, with San Antonio, Portland, they could lose Lamarcus Aldridge. The Clippers certainly look like they could be better. But the fact that a healthy Paul George all year for Indiana, uh, Miami getting much healthier. Mm-hmm. We'll see what Dwayne Wade does with his summer. Um, it's it's at Milwaukee getting Jabari Parker back. Yep. Everybody sort of is getting better right. near around the top, and it looks like at the very least the East will be deeper in terms of dangerous teams. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly the playoffs prove that even though Cleveland did march all the way to the finals, yeah. we had a lot of good series where yes. you sort of, I mean, there were times where you saw the Wizards play in the playoffs and you're just like, oh, this is bad. But right. there were other times where that same Wizards team you know, was running up and down the court, mm-hmm. and John Wall was playing a amazingly. John Wall, yep. So yeah, there's a lot of intrigue in the East where, other than Brooklyn and Toronto, we're cert- yeah, everybody's I mean, sort of getting better and more interesting. Right. Yeah, we're, Cleveland is the overwhelming favorite. We though. are definitely getting away from that old feeling of okay, there are two teams yes. in the East. Yeah. And everybody else. Well, is Chicago just sort and Cleveland are meeting late, and that's yeah, what's happening. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. All right. Thank you for watching. We've done multiple minutes of analysis based on the playoffs. Definitely too many. Too many. But Draymond Green can sort of succinctly sum everything he feels about the playoffs and finals up right here. Clay Thompson, uh, yup. Splash Brothers, yup. Cavaliers, nope. We won, yup. They suck, yup. We here, yup. They not, nope. And thank you, Draymond. I I loved it. It's just, he doesn't even need an interviewer there. No. He asks himself the questions. He should just be mic'd up. He answers the questions. That's true. That's very, he's doing everybody's yeah. jobs, much like he did during the finals. I think we should do the show drunk. <laughs> Done, allegedly. All right. Fine. Thank you for watching Wake Up NBA. It's been a fun ride through the spring. The show's brought to you by the Microsoft Surface. We'll see you soon. Mm-hmm.